We're going to be looking at a different aspect of this Christmas story here with the wise men, the account. We're going to be focusing in on the wise men and not their gifts, but the wise men and their journey, the wise men and the star. These wise men, or magi as they are sometimes called, these were magicians from an eastern kingdom, probably Persia or thereabouts, and and they came in this account in Matthew chapter 2 following a star. You know, it amazes me that they would take such a journey. It is amazing to me that these wise men had an understanding of what was transpiring that escaped those that were right there in Bethlehem and that were right there in Jerusalem. It is amazing to me. But you know, when you stop and think about it, it's hard to go wrong when you're following the right star, when you're following the right light. And so tonight, for a few moments... We're going to look at this, the journey of the Magi, and learn some things about following the light that God has given to each one of us and the call that he has given us to follow on. I'm going to be try to be sensitive of our time tonight, understanding that we're going to be back tomorrow. And I want to encourage you, if you would, to be back with us tomorrow night. It's going to be a wonderful Christmas Eve service. We're going to have some candlelight, like I said. We're going to, we're going to get into the Word. We're going to sing some carols. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. It's going to be a beautiful time, a celebration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And want to encourage you to come and be a part of that with us if you would. But tonight, for a few minutes, Matthew chapter 2. And let's look at these wise men and their journey following the light that God had given them. Let's look at verses 1 and 2 as we dive into the study tonight. The Bible says this. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Notice with me, if you would, tonight, Roman numeral 1, if you're taking notes, notice with me the reality of the light. The reality of the light. These wise men, these magi, if you would, knew that the star was for the king of the Jews. Now, I have to stop and ask myself, where in the world would they get such information? Where in the world would they get such knowledge? These men weren't Jews. They were Gentiles. These men had not grown up in Jerusalem. They, they had grown up in some eastern country. Uh, these men were, did not seem to have historical uh, knowledge or worship of Jehovah God. Uh, they were magicians of a pagan country. And yet these men came following a star that they recognized signified the birth of the king of the Jews. I want you to notice the reality of the light that they had been given. And notice its divine source. They didn't come up with this by accident. They didn't come up with this by looking at their Ouija boards or, or by flipping over their fortune telling cards. They didn't come up with this by, by, by sitting around meditating, humming and, and doing all sorts of crazy things. They had received divine light from the Lord and they had gotten it from the scripture somewhere. You know, perhaps, perhaps, uh, they had received some of the scriptures from the Jews when they were in captivity. And those scriptures were there. And as magicians, as magi, as wise men, they had studied over the, the, the sacred text of the Hebrews. Perhaps, perhaps it was something that maybe the Queen of Sheba had brought them back when she had visited Solomon. Maybe, just maybe, they had interpreted uh, the prophecy from Numbers 24 literally. Numbers 24, we see Balaam here. Numbers 24 and verse 17, he says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob. 
And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy all the children of Sheth. Wherever it was, at any rate, they took the light that God had given them and they ran with it as far as and as hard as they could. I want you to notice the reality of the light they had been given. And I don't know where they got it, but they got it. And that star was their cue. And they went after it. Can I tell you, you have a lot more light than those wise men did. You have a lot more light from God than those wise men did. God has given us light. You know, he's given us the light of the scriptures. Psalm 119, 105 says this, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that for all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. God has given you light. You hold light in your hands. He's given us light in His Scripture. He's given us light through His Son. Hebrews chapter 1 reminds us that he has spoken in the last days by his son. Jesus said of himself in John 8 in verse number 12, he said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He's given us light through the scriptures. He's given us light through his son. He's given us light through his spirit. There is no disputing that God has given us light. We have light. We have light from a divine source and we have light in grand supply. I'm going to tell you, we are blessed to live in a country and in an age where the light of God is more accessible than ever before. You think it wasn't that long ago that the common people did not own a Bible. That Bibles were scarce and hard to come by. You think even today that a large portion of the world does not have the Bible in their language. I showed you a couple weeks ago and it's in my office if any of you care to see. It's called the Tribal Bible or something to that. The Tribal Translation. And what it is, is it was presented to me by one of our missionaries as the Bible that's most often used when they go into unreached people groups. And you open the tribal translation and you know what you find? Blank page after blank page after blank page after blank page because they have nothing in many parts of the world. And I've got a Bible that I carry with me. I've got one that sits on the, the counter in my office behind me for study. I've got one that sits on my dresser at home, my desk area at home there for study. I've got one on my phone. I've got one on my computer. I've got them everywhere, and so do you. We live in a country, and we live in an age where we have so much access to the light. Ladies and gentlemen, what the wise men teach us, what their journey teaches us, it reminds us of the reality of the light. You don't have to walk in darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18, the Bible says, For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. If we're going to walk in the light, we are going to have to walk in the light. So there's no question that God has given us light. And there's no question where he has given you light. Dig in. Dig in. For as accessible as his word is, I am saddened by how biblically illiterate the average church is. For as many technological advances as we have, I am saddened that the 
average church member could have a more fluent conversation on the Star Wars saga than they could about the Gospels. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given you light. You don't have to walk in. I don't know what your struggle is. I don't know what your burden is. I don't know what you face. But I do know that every step of the life that God has given you, you can take it in light. The reality of the light. Dig in and come with expectation. That God is going to meet you and give you the light that you need. I'm telling you, there is light. The reality of the light. Not only do the wise men in their journey teach us the reality of the light. But let's continue. Pick up in verse number 3. So when Herod the king had heard these things, remember they had, they had gone to Jerusalem. They had asked, where is he that is born king of the Jews? When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief, chief priests and scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea for Thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared, and sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him bring, him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. The wise men first teach us about the reality of light. That no matter who you are or what you face, God has given you light for your next step. Not only do they teach us about the reality of the light, but they teach us about our responsibility to the light. You see, you have to have faith to follow it. Notice with me that at a certain point, Herod, the priests in Jerusalem, and these Gentile wise men all had the same information. They all knew that there was a star. They all knew that the Messiah was to be born, the King of the Jews was to be born in Jerusalem. At, at this point, they all have the same info. They all have the same light. But they do not all respond the same way. And don't miss the differences in their response. Herod rebelled against the light. The Bible says that he was troubled. He was upset. He was angered. Herod rebelled against the light because Herod was king and he would tolerate none other. The priests seem very indifferent to the light. The priests knew the scriptures. The priests were supposedly a part of the nation that had been long awaiting this Messiah. And yet the priests in Jerusalem, only five miles away, did not go to see Messiah. Did not go to see Jesus. Only the wise men had faith to follow. Let me ask you, we understand that God has given us light. But what is your response to God's light? You know, your response is your responsibility. No one else can respond to God's light for you. I love Herod. Herod, in false pretense, said, Go, find the child, and then come tell me. No, ladies and gentlemen, nobody else can follow your light for you. 
And you can't follow it for anybody else. Your response to God's light is your responsibility. You know, you hear people ask questions. There are so many kids in a family and they all have the same mom and dad. Why is it that this kid became an axe murderer and this kid became this and this kid became a saint? Why is it that the kids... Because every one of us are responsible for our own response. Every one of us have the responsibility to follow the responsibility to the light is that we have to have faith to follow. It is so sad that these men were so close and didn't follow. And it's so sad that so many Christians know the reality of the light. And they are so close. I'm going to tell you, I don't have to be terribly specific because you know. You know what God is doing in your heart. You know where God is growing you. You know where God is calling you to get victory over sin. You know where God is calling you to take a step of surrender. You know where God is calling you. I, I don't have to be specific because you know and the sad part is, is there are so many Christians who celebrate the light and they're so close. But they don't exhibit the faith to follow. I'll remind you tonight, close doesn't cut it. Judas Iscariot kissed the cheek of the Savior. As close as you can come. The Bible says died and went to his own place. Went to a devil's hell. The responsibility to the light is faith to follow and fortitude to finish. I love these guys. You stop and think about what they went through. The cost was great. We talked about it this morning. They probably traveled over a thousand miles, deserts and rivers and mountains, and, and, and probably over the span of a year or two, they, they faced all sorts of things and they did it all to find Jesus. You know, they went and they, they talked to people in Jerusalem. They talked to Herod himself. You got to understand, this guy Herod, he was straight crazy. You think politics and leaders these days are bad. Herod was crazy. He was named king of the Jews by the Romans, even though Herod himself was not a Jew. He then married a Jewish lady to try to gain popularity, but later thought better of it, had her killed, had her brother killed, had two of his own sons killed, along with many of his officials, generals, senators, soldiers, and citizens, pretty much anyone he suspected of disloyalty. <laughs> this guy Herod was so crazy that when Herod faced death, it's written that he went so far as to arrest many of the prominent, well-loved citizens of Jerusalem all of which were to be executed the moment he died. His reasoning was this. He said, and I quote, The people will not weep when I die, and I want them weeping, even if they are weeping over someone else. It was to this man that these wise men said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? A little bit of risk involved. They were willing to lay it all on the line just to follow Jesus. Not only did they have faith to follow, but they had fortitude to finish. They weren't going to stop until they were bowing before the Savior. I'm going to tell you, we have the responsibility to follow the light no matter the cost. You can't afford not to follow God. You can't afford not to obey God. You can't afford not to finish your course. We have the responsibility to have the fortitude to finish. There are a lot of people who start.
But let me ask you, how many people finish? Christianity today is a roller coaster. Your average Christian is up like a rocket and then down like a meteorite. Over and over and over and over again. And some of the people who this time last year sat in this auditorium and talked about how good God was and what great things God had done and was doing and how they were just going to allow God to work in their lives and they were going to make a difference for God. Some of those same people who sat in here last year, you'd have trouble finding them with a pack of bloodhounds and an FBI agent. You just would. You know, it's not just the reality of the light. It's your responsibility to it. What are we doing with the light that God has given us? And boy, if we could just get to that place where whatever it is God has told us to do, that we take the stance that we can't afford not to do it, no matter the cost, no matter the consequences. We have a responsibility to the light. These wise men, they teach us some very wise principles. Number one, the reality of the light that God has given you. Number two, your responsibility to the light that God has given you. And finally tonight, and think through this one with me if you would, your relationship with the light God has given you. Look at verses 9 through 12. The Bible says this, And when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before, and it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down. That, that idea of falling down or bowing down, they literally took their foreheads and touched the ground before this young child and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. You know, when we talk about the light that God has given us, it is not a transaction. Meaning it is not, okay, light, yes, now I'm done. Can I tell you, the light that God has given us, we are to have a, a relationship. It is an ongoing process with the light that God gives us through His Word, with the light that God gives us through His Son. It is something that we ought to be building and growing in and developing day by day by day. In our microwave society, we want to take the pill and be done. But that's not the Christian life. The Christian life is growing. The Christian life is, I'm closer to God today than I was yesterday. And by God's grace, I will be closer to God and more like Jesus Christ tomorrow than I am today. The relationship with the light. I want you to notice with me their empowered progress. You know, you never go wrong following God. And from eternity's view, you will never come up short following God. You will never come up short from eternity's view following the light that God gives you. Light brings life. Light brings joy. There is something about a bright sunny day that cannot be denied. Can I get an amen in the middle of a stinking Ohio winter? You know, this progress that we talk about, and hear me well tonight, is not the promise that you will one day add more commas to your checking account, that you will finally lose that last 20 pounds, or anything else to that nature. This progress that we talk about is the promise that you will accomplish what God has placed you here to do. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. 
You know, people can fail from an earthly standpoint and succeed from a heavenly standpoint. Absolutely. The relationship with the light teaches us that there is an empowered progress because there is an enlightened path. And I want you to notice this, that the magi here, the wise men, every time they took a step and every time they came to the end of the light God had given them, God always gave them light for the next step. And so they saw a star. They read the scriptures and they saw a star. What did they do? They followed the star till they couldn't follow it anymore. And they ended up in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, what happened? God gave them more light, didn't they? You know, God revealed again through the scriptures to the priests that Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. And they said, okay, let's go. And to Bethlehem they went. But I have to imagine that Bethlehem is a city with more than one house. I'm going to go out on a limb. So what did they do when they went to Bethlehem? Because you see, Micah chapter 5 doesn't tell us what house the baby was going to be in. But when they got to Bethlehem, what happened? They saw the star. God gave them more light. And when they went in the house and they worshipped, they went in the house and they worshipped and they presented that young child with their gifts and they bowed before their king, uh, their, their, their representative and their sacrifice. When they, when they acknowledged the Savior, what happened when they went to leave? God gave them more light in a dream that they should not return that same way. They should not return to Herod. You know, every time they came to the end of the light they had, God gave them light for the next step. And Christian, God promises the same thing to you. That God will always give you the light you need to take your next step. Psalm 18 in verse 28 tells us this, For thou wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. We know that the Bible tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We know that the Bible teaches us that the Lord God is a sun and a shield, that no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. We know the Bible teaches us that God will always give you the light that you need to take that that next step. Hey, it's a relationship. It's that relationship. I am growing in the light. And sometimes I struggle with this because I want to know what's going to happen down the road. You know, I'm not content sometimes with the next step. I want to know what's around the next bend. I'm not content with the next step. I want, to ha I want to know what happens five years from now, 10 years from now, 20. I want to know, especially when stuff comes up. Something comes up in your health or in your finances or in your job or something comes up with, with, with your family. I want to know. You know, I can remember being a young person and wanting to know who in the world I was going to marry one day. I wanted to know. Lord, is there anybody out there who will take me? <sighs> I wanted to know. But you know, I heard a preacher say, and I never forgot, that the man or woman who walks with God will always reach his destination. You see, it's a relationship with the light. Remember John 8, 12? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And so you know, young people, here's the thing. Don't spend all your time looking for the right one. Be the right one. And you walk with God today, and you walk with God tomorrow, and God won't let you miss him or her. He won't let you do it. The man or woman who walks with God will always reach his destination. You know, sometimes we want to know, what in the world is this crazy stock market going to do? Am I going to be able to do this or that or the other? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't need to know what it's going to do. I just need to walk with God today and walk with God tomorrow. What's my health going to do? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Because if I walk with God today and I walk with God tomorrow, 
and I have a relationship with the light, I will always reach my destination. But ladies and gentlemen, you have to handle the light that you've been given. You will never be given more light until you respond to what you have. And I want you to notice what happens when we reject the light. When we reject the light, you know, Romans chapter 1 gives us, gives us this picture of, of the heathens who when they knew God, when they had light, what did they do? They glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. So they had light and they rejected light. And became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. And so a rejection of God's light. When we reject light, we choose darkness. There's no gray here. You know, God has given us light, amen? God has given us light. And every one of us have the light that we need to take the next step in our spiritual journey. But it all boils down to this. Will you receive the light that God has given you? Or will you reject it? You know, I've told this story before, but I think it bears repeating in this instance here. When I was in, high, when I was in college, rather, especially on the summer and the winter breaks, I worked the third shift at a grocery store. I stocked the shelves. It was great. We closed down. There wasn't anybody else in there. We did our job. We went home. But we worked all night. And I can remember going home, being very tired, thinking it very weird that the sun was coming up when I was going to bed. Now, unfortunately, my room and the window in my room faced east. If you know anything about the way the world generally works, the sun rises in the east. We didn't have those nice light-blocking blinds. We didn't have those. And I can remember it was so frustrating until I learned to sleep with a pillow over my face. So if I ever, like, mysteriously pass away from suffocation, she did it. <laughs> but I learned to sleep with a pillow over my face. And you know what? That pillow did wonders. I mean, that pillow blocked out every bit of light. And I'm telling you, it, it was so wonderful because my body was tired and my body was weak. And so I took that pillow and I blocked the light. I'm going to tell you this. Spiritually, it is never that light is not available. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes it is simply easier because our bodies are weary and our flesh is weak to take a spiritual pillow, if you would, and put it over our spiritual eyes and willfully block the light God has given us. You know, the very message of Christmas is all initiated with the love of God. And we talked in Sunday school this morning that, that love, fear, holds at a distance, but love draws close. You know, in order to draw near, you have to come near. You have to take that next step. Let me ask you tonight, what is that next step for you to draw closer to God today than you were yesterday. Whatever God brought to your mind, that's your light. And the only question is now, will you walk in it? What will we do with the light that God has given us? I pray that we, like these wise men, will choose to follow on. Father, we love you.